On the show today, we talk about angels among us, or at least Heidi uh, starts us off on that topic. Our symbol today is the colour purple, if we get to it. And as always, we interpret the dreams and answer the questions you sent in during the week. Welcome to So You Think You're Awake, the show about dreams, guidance and healing. I'm Michael Sheridan and with me in studio is Heidi Brooke, our resident medium, and Susan Pullen, a healer and life coach. Hello. Heidi, you want to say hello? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to everyone who sent dreams to radio show at dream-analysis.com. Please continue to send them in as we always need them for the show. And you can jump the queue and call us on 425-373-5527. And in fact, today do that because we didn't bring too many dreams with us. 425-373-5527. And we will analyze your dream, connect with your guides for advice, or you can call with questions for Susan about healing and changing all life patterns. So anything strange this weekend? Have you any courses going on? You have your Wednesday class going on. Yep. I have my Wednesday class that just started. I had a class last weekend oh. um, that went Really well. I have a new class coming up in June, but I have an ad for that, so I won't go on Okay, about it well, that's, yes, <laughs> yes, I slagged you last week for not having an ad. And I have a class starting on May 28th, and I don't have an ad for it. So, <laughs> online course, May 28th, you can look it up on dreamtrackersguide.com. It's the first one in a while, actually. So, um, And do you want to say what it is? Yeah, well, it's about dream interpretation, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's done in a different style. It's, uh, I've pre-recorded 50 videos. Um, wow, 50 videos. Yeah, yeah, uh, at least that. That cover uh, lots of different aspects of dream analysis, starting off quite easily and then um, bringing you through the whole field. And um, they're categorized in each module. There's 12 modules. One module is released per week. Um, so a ho- module holds a focus. And um, then at the end of each one, there's a, a webinar call. So people can call and we have a, an hour where they can ask about their dreams or questions about what was in the module. I'm just trying to break the studio. So I just pulled something in like, with my foot. Yeah, and everything on the desk is moving. I hope I'm not talking <laughs> to thin air. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so yeah, so it's uh, it's been a long time coming. And because it's if there's videos as well as, you know, there's quizzes and interactive things in the course, because I'm really making use of the fact that it's online. Um, so there's a lot of detail in it because I expect people will watch particular videos uh, a number of times. Um, so it's not every aspect is going to be applicable to a person. So by the time they get to the end of the course, so everything that their dreams uh, are about is going to be covered. And so there will be particular modules that they will have a higher interest in. And, and so they will watch those again. But and, yeah, so. And it's, it's it, you're covering everything, right? Life pur- dreams about life purpose. Yes, well, and the whole. Health and relationships. Absolutely. And the focus is discovering your life purpose. Um, and there's a few different levels in the course. Uh, Heidi's involved in this too and uh, Susan doesn't know it she's involved at the top level too don't tell her though <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah so it's it's quite exciting um, and it's always really interesting to see how something you know rolling something out for the first time uh, I've already rolled it out to a lot of people who've done the courses before and gotten great feedback about it so I'm so I'm happy with that excited about that and you never know like the um like the class that you guys did, uh, the combined one on channeling, and I did dreams in it too. Um, we never did that again, you know, so you, you, <laughs> just kind of funny that uh, you think, OK, I'm going to do this and we're going to repeat it over and over. But you never know if it's going to repeat. Mm-hmm. Anyway, May 28th, but uh, you can get it on dreamtrackersguide.com. You can get all the details. There's lots of detail up there about each of the modules, what's in each of the modules and what you can expect and what you can take away. So there's takeaways on each one, not just what you fill your brain with. But uh, there's tools for, to help you um, with each aspect of analysis. Very cool. So, Heidi, today we're going to talk about angels among us. Yes, that's the topic. Well, that's a topic that's come up on the show a couple of times. I don't think very often, but it does show up in the dreams as well. Um, uh, people's dreams can indicate whether they are a guide or whether somebody that they know on the physical plane is a guide. Can you just remind us what, what does that look like in a dream? If somebody has a title or they speak with authority or the big calling card for a guide in a dream is if they offer you a gift um, because that's reminding you about your gifts. Uh, they usually take in your dreams. They take a position in front of you and uh, to your right and slightly elevated. And do you ever see in dreams, people's dreams telling them that the dreamer themselves is a guide? Uh, 
not necessarily, but what you could do is dream of a friend of yours giving you a gift and then you know that they're a guide. They won't necessarily know. Um, a lot of guides don't know their guides. Um, they do by, by the end of their lives, but uh, not always. And what's interesting to know is that most of us will know somebody here on the earth plane that is a guide. Well, but we don't know it either. Most I, of the only, time. <laughs> I only encountered about, like I've been doing this for 25 years, uh, probably a little longer, and I only encountered about you know, 11 guides or less before I came to Seattle and then I discovered a nest. (laughs) (laughs) So, but Michael, how did you know that that they were guides? From the, what they did in dreams. Because they were giving people gifts or? Uh, Giving giving gifts and repeatedly giving gifts Uh um, would be one. Or another one would be in their dream. So a lot are from their own dreams, I could tell there were. But sometimes you know they're a guide and when you channel on the dream, you're told don't tell them, which is kind of funny. And I also get in readings. I've given a couple of readings to people who are guides and I'm also told, you know, uh, sometimes I can tell them, sometimes I can't tell them. But it's it's interesting to see because even I'm blown away by the fact when they tell me that and then things start to make sense. (laughs) Usually they, they find out pretty quickly after they have a dream where, you know, if, for instance, you're a tour guide in your dream, uh, like one of our common friends, friends in common who have, has had that dream. And then she's had many dreams um, that confirm she's a guide. Um, but like, so in her dream, she's a guide, whatever title she has. And she's had a number of them, about three of them at this stage, where she's a something guide. And you just take out the, the word before it. Um, yeah, it's a strong indication. <laughs> well, no, that's a flat out statement. I know. I'm joking. <laughs> so, um, so this is something I channeled yesterday. Um, I've had this on, on my mind for a long time and they've been giving me clues about what to talk about. And so this is just a little something. And the wording of this is slightly it, archaic. Or, or I thought it was interesting. And this is one thing that I've been doing with uh, my guides. They've, they've told me in dreams it's important the wording that I use. And I had a dream where I would, I would pronounce certain words a certain way and they'd be like, no, you have to say it this way. And so... I'm not allowed to change words or anything, and I don't want to. But, you know, even if I question what I'm getting, sometimes I'd, I'd want to, like, say it a different way. And they, they don't let me, and it's important to stick to what they say because that's, that's how you trans channel. You can't, <laughs> you can't make things up or, you know, obviously, or change the wording because the wording is important. So guides have long come to the earth plane to cater to the earth design. For it is here they can have a direct contact with our most formidable creation. You know them as your mothers and fathers, your aunts and uncles, and even your sons and daughters. They are the ones that hold your hand through hard times and push you purpose- purposefully into your life path. They operate without constraint and without judgment. While here, they raise the vibration of our plane and contribute to the healing of others. Of course, they also offer advice. Some guides may not know they are of the guide level, yet when it is made aware to them, in retrospect, it seems quite obvious. The term sleeper agents comes to mind. The circumstances of their earth lives always involve the advancement of others. Some would see guides to be here for pleasure, though it, though it is not pleasure but love that calls them to us. And through such love, they give of themselves entirely to aid your development. That does not mean that they don't wish to be here or dislike being here, though sleeper agents may question, question, and question their presence on earth. Earth is a joyous place, only the vibration is denser than their non-physical abode. It is merely not how they normally choose to operate. Do not confuse choice with like. And when they so make that choice to be physically present among us, the earth sings and our souls dance with the opportunity and gift they are bestowing upon us. In short, the earth experiences changes in a positive, abundant direction when they literally grace us with their presence. I like that last bit, grace us with the presence, because, of course, grace is one of the words used for the dharmic path and Christ consciousness and all that, you know. Um, so we're meant to uh, quiz you about that. Quiz me. <laughs> I, <laughs> formidable, you say. Um, yeah, and this is when I, so I was channeling this and I was typing it as I was channeling, um, in, a, in a sense, not knowing what I was writing until after I would read it back. And I was reading the word formidable and I was like, that doesn't make sense. And that was one of the words that I was kind of talking about that I felt like I really should change. <laughs> yeah. And then I looked up the definition of it just to be sure. But uh, formidable means it, it's something that inspires great fear or great admiration by being so great and powerful. And uh, so I guess it, it does make sense and it is important to 
that we view Earth in the sense that it was created for. It is an inspiring awe place. Off, it can be an awful place. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. But um, it is kind of funny when, you, when people are regressed to between life stages, even living a horrible life, they view it as, oh, that was a really good life because I learned this and I learned that. And, I, you know, and it's like, what? It reminds are you me insane? of Susan's uh, last piece last week when she was, is it good or is it bad? Oh, don't start that again. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was perfect. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and then um, you say that we know them as our parents and aunts and uncles and so on. But of course, you're, you're saying they're hidden among them. Yes. They like the term that they came up with was the, the sleeper agent. Yeah. And sleeper agent because a lot of guides don't know the guides. Yes. Um, Not because they're... <laughs> but they still live a life that it fits, which is kind of cool. And I pointed it out to a few people. And when I said it to them, it was like this, that you could see the look in their face. They were like, oh. And they immediately knew that they were. They didn't even question yeah. it. And I wonder for them, does, it, does a complete awareness come to them when they find out? I don't know, but I do know one thing. I, I do know one person who is a guide and she's insane. <laughs> <laughs> she totally In a is. good way? Is that good or is, is that Is there bad? a good way to be mad? <laughs> um, she's very good at readings and uh, she, she reads palms, although I don't think she's really reading the palms. She does lots of numbers and stuff when she's looking at a palm. But um, you can only take her in small doses. <laughs> and so on. And it's just, it's funny. You know, you assume a guide is going to be somebody who's very enlightened. They're definitely tuned in, but um, I, I, I think a, like a, a guide can still be dropped on its head as a baby or something. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just the way we perceive it. <laughs> I, uh, no, it is. You know, it, it's like an alcoholic um, on the street could be doing. They could be a guide, you know, so I, I'm, I'm making light of a, of a sy system that does actually put guides in, in places that really ruffles feathers. Because that's one of their purposes is to ruffle feathers. Mainly, we see them in our lives where they keep pushing us along and they won't let us sit still. And they, they encourage us to, to pursue our life goals. Even if they're not aware they're a guide, they still push us and push us and push us. And when you look back at it, you, uh, you spot them. And the most interesting thing about uh, when, they're, when they plan their physical lifetime, with, they have it linked up with our lifetimes way before we're born, way before they're born. So all these events us coming into contact with them is, uh, is prepared years and years in advance. So it's not coincidence. They don't come to the earth plane and then just, you know, oh, I'll help you today. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's very not, planned. Not and arbitrary. that's why, exactly. And that's why they are within our families, you know. Um, yeah. We know them and they know you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to cut it short because we have Cheryl on the line and she's been hanging on for a little while. Um, so we bring it back to dreams. Hi, Cheryl. You have a dream for us? Yes, I do, and it's it's kind of a short one, um, and I don't remember a lot of my dreams, but this one was so vivid, it looked like it was real, and uh, I was, uh, I'm in a, I'm, I don't know what the situation was, but I see this doll that's laying on uh, the ground, and uh, I think, oh, what a sweet little doll, and uh I looked at it, and it had blood on its arms, and uh, I turned it over, and it morphed into, like, a Chucky doll from the horror movies. Oh, yeah. And the left pupil was really big, and the right pupil was really small, and the head was round, and then I woke myself up because yeah. it was just too creepy. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't fancy Chucky in my, in my dream. Um, so a doll is going to bring you back to childhood because that's when you play with dolls. And the blood on the arm, which arm was it? Well, it, it, uh, Both of them. Okay, so it, it's saying in childhood, um, basically there's things that you still need to deal with in childhood. So when we see physical damage or we see injuries to uh, characters in dreams, it's talking about an aspect of us that is impaired. So it's not talking about physical impairment. But um, So if the doll is a girl doll, then it's saying... Um, that aspects of your female side are impaired due to issues in childhood. And, of course, dreams exaggerate. Um, okay. So, you know, you, we have to allow that. So if you see somebody in your dream, for instance, who is, uh, who's got some negative trait in spades, like extremely critical, extremely uh, putting people down all the time, for instance, and this isn't in your dream. But um, So if you see somebody like that, 
then it's saying you've got that trait to a degree, uh, but it's a much lesser degree than what you see in the dream. So that's I'm just pointing out how much dreams exaggerate. So here it's saying the damage is there, um, but not to the degree that the dream shows it. But it's something that um, you don't want to look at because it turns in morphs into this Chucky doll, which is something you don't want to look at um, because it has it has kind of like has a, a life of its own and it, it sets out to destroy people. If I remember Chucky right. Um, so the problem here is how do you look back at your childhood and say, what do I need to do? Um, especially when it's very, you know, going back a long time, cutting the ties that bind is a process that I talk about all the time on the, on the show because it works on issues in childhood. Even if you don't know what those issues are, um, it comes up. So everything is about a feeling. Um, I mean, if you know things that went on in your childhood, and it could be something, for instance, uh, I have some dreams because I was going to talk about some of this uh, on the show. Um, if, for instance, you were neglected in childhood, then you know it, it can be something like that, saying that's going to impair your female side because you didn't feel loved, um, and therefore that's blocking your ability to nurture and care and so on and so on. So it's it's a very simple thing and it's a very practical thing that you can put your finger on at the end of the day. But when you see it in a dream, it can just look horrific and um, it can really stump us. And we'd say, OK, what do I need to do? So you look at the gender of the, of the doll. The gender of the doll will usually tell you which parent you need to deal with first. And of course, life is designed on purpose to give us issues in childhood because working on those issues is what is going to help us grow and become aware of ourselves um, in adult life. And that awareness is something we get to bring with us then when we go back to the does it, spirit plane. Does it matter that the uh, when I first saw the doll on the ground, it was I thought it was a female doll, and when I picked it up, it was a male? Yes, it does, of course. So this uh, it can, of course, be saying, look, you have issues with both parents, so you have the male and female, but more likely what you're going to see is um, issues with mom that caused you to become uh, male and male energy has to do with being logical and rational. You know, men are often accused of being too logical. So um, if you find yourself being very rational in life or with regard to a specific area of life, then you can have this dream because it's saying, look, heal this, these issues and you'll be able to listen to your heart and follow your feelings, uh, which is really what we want to do. Um, we quite often think that our mind is who we are and our, our strong intellect is who we are, but really it's a slave for us. And we're meant to use our mind or use our intellect to help us achieve our life goals. Um, so that's an easy one for you to answer. I haven't let you talk much, but would you say that you're a rational person? Do you calculate things and say, okay, I'm going to do this because I can work that out, that this is going to be the best thing for me? Or would you say that you uh, listen to your heart and follow your feelings and, and go with how things feel rather than... Um, how you calculate what is going to be the best thing for you. Is that a question to me? Yes, <laughs> a very long-winded question. Would you say <laughs> would you say you're a rational person? Do you Yes, pretty much. Okay. But so, I can I have my moments when I'm kind of uh impulsive. Okay, well, impulsive can be right, uh you know where you're just following your feelings and you know, okay, I need to do this. Um when you get that impulse, do you also get a sense about why it's the right thing to do, or do you just get a sense of this is definitely the right thing to do? So I'm going oh, to do most, it. most of the time I can figure out why it's the right, right thing to do. And do you figure it out after, or like do you get the sensation and then figure it out? Or mm, okay. a little bit of both. Okay. So, okay. So you have a sense, you have, you, you can relate to the fact of what it feels like then to get a strong feeling and know that you're to follow that feeling. Okay. So, so the dream is saying, look, you need to work on issues. Uh, that impair your female side uh, from childhood. And that's all that's going to do is strengthen you. It, it'll allow you to understand more about yourself. And that's the whole purpose of, of everything. Is, it, is there a uh, reason that the pupils were different sizes? Uh, and, the, why, and why it looks so lifelike? Well, it's the reason it looks lifelike is because of what we project into it. So it's like saying, let's talk about somebody else's dream. We had one lady who um, was attending the funeral of her mother and uh, the casket was an open casket, but she didn't want to look inside uh, the casket uh, because she knew her mother would be de decomposing. And it's kind of a similar dream. It's like, I don't want to look at the issues around my mom because it's going to be difficult. It's going to be unpleasant. So the, the evil nature of Chucky, and, and if nobody knows Chucky, it's about this doll that 
comes to life. It just looks like a regular doll, but when it comes to life, all it wants to do is kill people. So it's a typical horror kind of movie. But um, it's so it's saying that you don't want to look at the issues in childhood because they have a power over you. They still have a power over you. But that's all oh. that's all the reason to look at them is is remove that power, remove the negative effects of uh, your childhood conditioning. And of course, okay. it's the same for all of us, uh, but it's a little bit different for each of us, too. But we all have these childhood issues and it's easy to tell who has childhood issues. It's the people who haven't dealt with them yet. They're the ones who have childhood issues. So it's like we all think, OK, we all forgive our parents for our childhood when we're older because we look at the world through adult eyes and say, OK, they didn't know better or they, whatever the reason is. Uh, but we're not right to do that because we need to look at those issues and deal with them in ourselves and remove those okay. issues. And we get stronger from it. So your dream is saying this is something you need to do. The left eye is to do with the female side. So it's saying uh, you would be better off being able to see more with, you know, it's showing the imbalance, but the, it's trying to restore the balance uh, by ah. gi- giving more vision to the left side. So allowing you see more with your heart than you currently do and closing wow. off the male side. But Thank you so much for the insight. All right. Thanks for the dream. It was an interesting one. Mm-hmm. Bye bye. Bye. So we're going to take a break. Be back with you in a moment. You're listening to So You Think You're Awake. Do you want to be happier? You've probably already heard that happiness is an inside job. You know that it doesn't come from outer circumstances. It's a gift we give ourselves. But you're not sure how? Join me, Susan Pullen, for a weekend workshop devoted to inviting joy, passion, and play back into your life. June 25th and 26th in Edmonds, Washington. You'll learn proven tools for greater happiness, as well as healing heartache and letting go of dead weight in your life. You'll leave the weekend feeling lighter, more present, and more joyful. Go to true-radiance.com today to register for Inviting Joy Back Into Your Life. Hello, this is Heidi. How can I help you? You tell me. You're the psychic. That's not how it works. I am a medium. I connect to your spirit guides and loved ones and pass on their messages to you. So why did I call? Use the force, Heidi. Look, I can get answers to any questions you ask. That's not a problem. They can be about anything. Relationships, career, children, finances, anything. Anything? Okay. What's my favorite color? Dave, your mom says you're being childish. For readings with Heidi, go to angelsontheline.com. Stay informed with news, traffic, and weather at the top of the hour, weekdays on Alternative Talk, 1150 AM. Welcome back to So You Think You're Awake with Michael Sheridan, Heidi Brook, and Susan Pullen. Our show is about dreams, guidance, and healing, and our phone number is 425-373-5527. If you have a dream, a dream-related question, you want to connect with your guides for advice, or you can call with questions for Susan about healing and changing old patterns in your life. Once again, the number is 425-373-5527. So let's drop this one on Heidi. Somebody writes. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> this oh, is, good. I'll this do it more often. This is a fun game we get to play. I feel week. like it's the hot seat. Hi, Heidi. <laughs> um, well, we got this. It's, it's to the radio show, so it's all of us. But she says, dear Heidi, I'm ready to begin cutting the ties with book in hand, but I'm short on details of what to do exactly. Phyllis, this is Phyllis Crystal who came up with the process, says to visualize myself and the parent in the two circles and to do this for two weeks. Um... Heidi, you recommend I cut the ties for a minimum of six weeks. So do I do the visualization for two weeks, then continue on to cutting the ties exercise? Thank you for your assistance. Lisa. The visual visualization, she does not have to do it for the full two weeks. She's very good at meditating already. And uh, so to move her vibration up into that space, it won't take her that long. But she does... Um, I originally got for her that is six weeks that she has to do that. But she's probably already exercise. doing it. So this is May 11th. May 11th. <laughs> oh, that, not that long ago. It's only last week. Um, six weeks total doing the cutting the ties. Um, you, they said you're already in a space where you can visualize it correctly and go into that meditative state. Yeah. And I'll just add that um, the book has inaccuracies. Phyllis Crystal's book has inaccuracies. Um you know, cutting the, I've been a cutting the ties facilitator for over 20 years. So what I would add is it typically takes six weeks. 
with doing the visualization each time. And you can relax on the positives and negatives. So this is something you do before cutting the ties. You make a list of all the positive things about the person you're cutting the ties with and the negative things. And what you're trying to do is get um, feelings that come up around that person. Um, but uh, you do that initially uh, in detail, but then you can relax on it as you, as you move through the process. Cutting the ties with mom can cause chest discomfort because your heart chakra is opening and you can feel that. And even with me saying that to people, some people still go to the ER because they, f- they think they're having a heart attack. I know someone that did that. Oh, do you? Yeah. Not, yeah. not you. <laughs> <laughs> we can't say who it is. So. No, it was me. Oh, really? I you remember you dropped me off. Oh, but it was because you were cutting the ties, was it? it? Yeah, it was because I was cutting the ties. It was, I had just finished. Do you not remember? No, I thought you went because of your drug addiction. <laughs> That's what they thought. <laughs> Is that that hospital? Yeah, they did think that. They wouldn't <laughs> even look at me until the drug toxicology came back. Yeah, because she just wanted to Which fix. came back negative, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> just to be clear, <laughs> she was not drug seeking. <laughs> anyway, um, it's quite interesting, though, how doing a visualization and practice like this, you're, what you're doing with cutting the ties is programming your subconscious, saying, this is what I want to do. So your subconscious starts bringing up all the stuff connected with this person and allowing you to express it. And of course, if you don't express it fast, you're in trouble. But when you do express it, you can feel your heart chakra opening up because you get eliminating everything that caused you to close it off in the first place. And you can physically feel that sensation. And that's, um, that pain doesn't last long. It usually only lasts like a day or two. And it's very fleeting. It's only strong once, um, but then it's done. Um, and what else have I got? It's also, um, it's always been a phantom pain, but I watch dreams to be certain, uh, you know, for anybody who's doing it. If you actually have had uh, heart issues, then I wouldn't encourage anybody to cut the ties with the mom, do it through counselling or some other means. Um, but it can also bring on depression. Uh, which again is very short, you know, maybe only lasts a few days. You make this sound like so much fun. It is fun. <laughs> and cutting the ties with dad could cause temporary back pain, leg pain and digestive system issues. And it nearly always does that. Um, none of that is in your book. So this is really why I'm saying it. If you've read the book, none of that in, is in your book. But 90 percent of the people who do cutting the ties experience it. Now, it is fun because you are here to increase your awareness and you can go all the way through your life dragging um like dragging a, a leg with a problem or you can deal with the issue and uh, fix the problems that cause you to suppress your male side or your female side or inhibit the flow. And so, yes, absolutely do it, uh, because when you get to the end of your life and have the life review, you're going to see, OK, I was an idiot for not doing this. I could have done something to, to alleviate it. Um, anyway, uh, the best measure for when you're halfway through the process is you suddenly start remembering more positives to add to your list. And from that point on, um, all the past, all the physical symptoms disappear. So three weeks in, so if you do it for three weeks, you're probably going to have negative experiences for about a week and a half. And then the rest is all positive. And people are hanging on to issues that they've had for 30 years or more, and uh, they can eliminate all the negatives within about three weeks. But then the positives start uh, building and building and building and snowballing. So it does take six weeks, but it's not painful for the six weeks. And what is interesting about the, you know, when you were saying you you feel like you can have a heart attack with mom or the back issues with the dad. Um, it doesn't matter how that physical experience comes up, comes upon you. It can be a car accident. It can be actually a physical occurrence happening, but you still have that physical feeling. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is cool. <laughs> Your solution to not having those uh, pains. And a lot of people don't have those experiences. So when I say 90% of people have them, very few have the feeling of having a heart attack. But some people have it. And I had that when I was cutting the ties myself initially. And uh, it's just, it's remarkable how you you can feel the physical symptoms. So if you're ever wondering, how can my, my thought process affect my health? Cut the ties and you will see it. It's, it's stunning. So we have more to say on this, but we have um, Virginia on the line so, with a dream. So hi, Virginia. Thanks for holding on. Hi, thanks for taking my call. So please give us an easy dream. <laughs> okay, well, it's um, it's a little, it's a different type of dream. I I had it the minute I went to sleep. Okay. Um, so early on, and so I saw these a mandala of sacred geometry, and then there just was another one that came down over that one, and they just kept being more and more sacred geometry and mandalas and energy systems that just kept piling and piling and piling on top of each other. 
and um, and then I woke up and I and it seemed like it had only been ten minutes, but it was had been an hour and a half. Okay, I think that was very much a healing uh, thing going on for you. Um, oh. The mandalas. Anybody? Would, what do mandalas? Do you have mandalas hanging up in your house? Do you know what they are? I I, I do have one mandala. Okay. Did you recently purchase it? Or? No, it was given as a gift of, of quite a few months ago. Okay, so it's recent, all the same. Um, but what is it for? What did the person tell you it was for? It was um, a heart mandala. Okay. Um, so I would say it's. Um, that was the mandala working. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm not entirely sure that was a dream. That's what I'm hearing. That was actually a, an occurrence. You were on the, not sure what plane that is, but that was a healing occurrence that you remembered uh, it during your dream state. Yeah. Um, and you did say it was right after you closed your eyes. So. Right. Yeah. And, and so this is the thing about mandalas uh, is they actually do work if they're made correctly or if the intent is put in them. Correctly. Um, so it, you wanted this to happen? Did you want this to happen it, what, when you purchased that or did you just... She got a gift of it. it was yeah. Pre- yeah, it was a gift. Um, oh, oh yeah, yeah, when you got it as a gift. But you did right. want this to occur. Um, so it was healing. And then, so you said there was more mandalas coming down on top of it? So, yeah, and, and sacred geometry and like energy systems. And, uh, and do you know anything about sacred geometry is it like a field you're interested in? Um, yeah, somewhat, I suppose. Okay, good. Yeah, so that fits. Yeah, yeah. And and how did the mandala come about? Did your friend create it for you or just see one and bought it? Yeah, she just saw one and bought it. Okay, so there, with this mandala, there, there's it's not 100% right, but it started the process off. So it, it's good enough in that regard. So that, I think that's why you've got the other one superimposing. Um, <laughs> yeah. So if you can tune in, to uh, energy, can you tune into energies? Um, Your guides say yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right. Oh, in denial. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can, which is why you're attracted to sacred geometry and this. And it was you. It wasn't any other outside source, other than, of course, the divinity that we all tune into. Um, that you put the correct symbology, or I'm not sure what the correct word is. It for over the mandala so that it would work for you. And it should continue to work. Was this yesterday? This was uh, uh, five days ago. Five days ago. So it should continue to work with for you. I, th- I feel like you've put it on pause, so you have to ask your higher self to stop pausing it because it's a beneficial thing for you. But I do oh. I do think she can, you can also add something to the mandala, not physically or touching it, but put something near it to to heal the part that's missing in it. So Because it, they're normally yeah. they're created... Uh, specifically for you and I have a funny feeling Susan knows a lot about these things and she's staying quiet <laughs> but, but, but we we knew somebody who used to draw them um, at the exhibitions you used to do yeah, Heidi. yeah um, so she Iona, used to yeah. she was brilliant so yeah. she used to tune into the person and then draw what came to her so they're normally very personal um, but they do have a purpose and that's what I was just picking up just before you were saying that what would she use to clear the energy of the mandala that this was it, it would depend what the what the missing piece was, oh. but I, I mean, sacred geometry it really has it has a measurable impact on our energy field. You, you probably know this, um, and and if if there's um, if there's a symbol that's really close to a sacred geometry symbol, but it's missing a section, that can be um, detrimental to our energy field. Mm. So. Um, I think in your case, you just need to add something like crystals close okay. to the mandala and, and you already know what you need to do. You might even have done it. Um, so and, and that'll be fine. So it, it's not that off and it's unusual because normally they would be quite off and they, they can they can really buzz you, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and do the wrong thing. But in this case, it's it's brought about something that's a welcome transformation or should be a welcome transformation. Yeah. So uh, so it's cool. Uh, interesting and maybe this is um, this is showing you your own strength the fact that a mandala that isn't 100% accurate is able to work for you is quite an interesting thing Um, so I I don't know what that tells us about you but (laughs) it's uh, it's unusual Um, so mostly you would probably find you're being told take a mandala out but the fact that you can you can fix part of it is is cool well thank you well thanks so much I appreciate that
Thanks for that. And we also have Lisa on the line with a question for Heidi. So uh, I'm going to go get a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Lisa. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. Hi, Heidi. Um, okay, so I saw you last month and you told me to get off of caffeine or, or it was recommended. And Did so you the see the way day, I said coffee there? <laughs> <laughs> and so the next day I stopped caffeine and so it's been 27 days. And um, If you're asking if you can have coffee again, the answer is no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just Thank joking. you. <laughs> That's not the question. The question is, um, uh, it's a little bit rocky sometimes and so... Uh, am, how am I doing without the caffeine? <laughs> You're doing really good. They said that you're compensating. Your what are you taking in compensation for the caffeine? Yeah, I've got a um, good question. A uh, little bit more sugar than I normally eat. Okay, so they don't want you to get to get hooked on that extra sugar. I mean, they right. don't want you to be hooked on sugar. Period. But to have the extra sugar, and so what you have to start doing is think about how you're going to eliminate that sugar when you feel you've reached a point where you don't need the coffee anymore or the, okay. or the caffeine. Um, it's just the sugar. It's affected. Other than that, you're doing brilliantly. They're really happy with it. And they said that your kidney health should start to improve. Um, were you having, I don't remember entirely. Were you, were you having any symptoms of back pain or anything where your kidneys are? Yeah. Um, I had some digestive issues. Okay, and that have they? Oh yes, yes, yes. Have they started to alleviate? Um, that's that's kind of why I'm calling because not really. There, it's not a noticeable change yet. And um, in inside, and they're showing me the inside of your body. They're showing that that healing is going on. You do need to start drinking a lot more water. You know, you're going to okay. say probably that you you drink a lot of water, but you need to drink more water because when your insides are repairing themselves, they do require more water for okay. the healing process and not just for absorption. Um. Yeah, other than that, they're really happy with it. They want you to stick with it. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a six-month to nine-month healing period. Okay. Okay. Yay. Yeah, well, thank you. Well, coffee's expensive, so you should save a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah, and the sugar, because it's a, a digestive thing and it's your kidneys are healing along with this, it is your digestive, your um, intestines. Sugar can, yeah. can damage the insides of the intestines as well, especially if there's like a leaky gut or any kind of damage in there. So that's why you really have to start start from like today to curb the sugar intake as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Aren't, you, aren't you glad you called? <laughs> <laughs> I am, yeah. Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Hey, I was okay. being sarcastic. You, sarcastic. You were meant to say no. Okay. <laughs> um, and we have Alison on the line with a dream. Hi, Alison. Hi there. Yeah, thanks for um, allowing me to call in with this. I had this dream a, a few nights ago and it continues to bother me in terms of there must be something here I need to understand. Um, so the dream is a little bit disoriented, but the prime factor, it had to do with a sister and a husband who live out of state. And in the dream, they were living in the area again. And I was riding my bicycle around trying to go to where they were. And my bicycle handle kept coming loose. And it never took me off course, but I kept noticing it and having to readjust it to be safe. Then the dream switched to a place where um, it was like a, a business, so the, in, the intention was it was their business somehow, and a man came to the business, um, kind of looked like a, a tough person, and I immediately was afraid of him, and he took, had stones, and he took a large stone and threw it at one of the windows of the business and broke the window. It didn't break it through. It created that cracked effect through it all, and then I immediately understood that he had a sister that was somehow hurt unintentionally by my sister and her husband, and he was very angry, and he was coming back for revenge. And so I was, the only person in the scene was me and this, this man, but I kept, um, I was afraid, but there was a part of me that knew maybe he wasn't going to hurt me, and then he threw another stone, and I realized he was going to keep throwing stones until he had broken all of the windows in their business, and I felt horrible about this misunderstanding that he was so mad at them, but they hadn't done anything intentionally. Then he told me that I need to go up as kind of like a final part of this retribution. I need to go up to this high ledge that was part of this building. And, and now the scene is kind of like a, almost like it's a recreational place for children. I'm standing on the ledge and it's about seven 
stories up, and I'm looking down on a swimming pool, and it's dusk, and I'm he's telling me I need to jump off the ledge into the pool. And this is something that they're in the daytime kids do. So there's a part of me that realizes it must be okay and safe, but I'm terrified and I don't want to do it. And I keep thinking about how am I going to do this and survive it? I don't see how I'm going to survive it. It's going to hurt. How should I hit the water? And I'm just working on how can I do this? Can I do this? And then he comes out and says, oh, I'm just kidding. You don't have to do it. Oh. And, and then I wake up. Okay. <laughs> All right, so what, what's going on? We, we look at what's going on in reality um, and we take that out of the dream. Uh, okay. Most of the time we take it out. So uh, your sister and husband, do they act, and her husband, do they live out of the state? Um, they do. I don't interact with them very much. And why do you not interact with them? What are, oh, what, what? It's just busyness. Yeah, I, I, we have a fine relationship. It's just busy, so we don't get to chat that much. Okay, and do you have a business? Um, I have a just kind of a small business. I work from home part time, but other yeah. Okay, and is that your income, your only income? It's actually just partial supplemental income. My primary income is working for someone else. Okay, and is there something uh, like we look at the ledge and you're being told jump into the pool? Uh, is there something where you feel like you need to take a leap of faith if you want to do this? Um, oh. That's going on now. Possibly, I, I, yeah. I do feel kind of torn in between. Um, yeah, this is a new thing for the last maybe three months for me to be doing my primary work and then the supplemental work. And it, it is a, a form of shifting every week back and forth. And uh, so there could be something there, feeling a little bit caught in between two and not knowing what to dive into completely. And what do you, what are you drawn to? What would you like to pursue? Well, I actually like working for myself. I like the independence of not having to get you know, dress and commute on a bus to work and all those kinds of things. Working from home is, is very liberating. Okay. Um, so that's what the, the jump is going to be. But unfortunately, at the end, he says you don't need to do it. So this, that's true. You don't need to do this, but it is something you could do. And, okay. and because you described the diving into the pool as something that children would do, um, now you say they would do it during the day so it's obviously nighttime or something in your dream so that says okay you, you don't see where this is going to land if you were to take this leap of faith you don't know where you're going to end up um, but because you're being encouraged to do it in the dream it means it would work so uh, at least it will work in terms of you even if you didn't continue doing that you would do something else because it, it's it's a step it's a leap in the right direction uh, because it, it allows you do what you want to do in life but it will restore uh, fun and joy and things that you would you associate with kids having fun in life, you know. So, uh, okay. Uh, so it would bring that uh, into your life, which is something that would be really good. So swimming pools are good. Swimming pools are water represents getting into life. So being asked to dive into that is really good. Um, okay. Because we quite often do things um, like we, we do a job that has a pension and we say, OK, I can retire at 55. And we're looking, uh, you know, we're burning our life up because we only have a certain amount of life in us um, and saying, OK, I'm going to relax and do things when I hit that age. But when, when you hit that age, you're a very different person. Uh, and nothing brings that home more than, for instance, um, having grandkids and realizing you don't have the same energy um, right. to work with your grandkids as you did with your own. So we're, we're burning up the best part of our lives, possibly doing something that will uh, freeze time for somebody else, uh, whereas Really, life is about us living it and, and enjoying it and jumping and taking risks, uh, which is what your dream is saying. So if we go back to the first part of your dream, which is um, your sister and her husband, what is different about them? Did they do something where they did uh, pursue a business or uh, they avoided something? You know, we, we have to go back to see why is it them? Why are they the ones in the dream? Uh, well, I would say they do have their own business and they're very successful and they are just uber confident. Um, they're developers, so they have vision and they, they invest huge amounts of money on big projects. And so it's it's very impressive to me, that okay. confidence. And um, Oh, ec excellent, excellent. So that fits in with you having that. So because she's your sister, um, you have the same potential as she does. You have the same ability to have um, the traits that she has, the confidence and, and so on and so on. And maybe even she's somebody you can fall back on. But you uh, are riding a bicycle here. So it's saying your feelings, your fears, uh, because the, the handle is going to come off the bike, uh, your fears with regard to feelings, um, as opposed to logically working out this won't work because X, Y and Z. This is for you. The, the block is 
uh, on the heart side that you know, you just have um i don't know if it's a mistrust or or just fears that it, it it isn't going to work um or isn't going to balance itself out um but yeah it's a hard thing so you dealing with issues around mom although i don't think you need to do that it's just uh you need to your heart is saying do this you need to get it past the fear and feel this sense of uh, this will work and this will be good and this will be fun and, and bring joy into my life. Um, gotcha. uh, that's why they're in there. So they're there for a positive reason, um, okay. uh, which is good. And is there anything else I skipped that I didn't cover? I thought it was interesting that the guy was taking revenge and oh, throwing yeah. rocks at windows, but the windows didn't completely break. Okay. Was yeah. there anything about that? Yes. Yeah, so, um, and the ledge part says again that you you can be very logical. So you look at things and say, what is the best thing for me to do from a rational standpoint? Um, so, how do you look at how do you then follow your heart if you do this? So, there's a real easy trick I often give to people. You you imagine yourself having taken the leap, like the dream is asking you to do. Take the leap, um, and it's going to be a but it's a year from now. So you've already done it, and it's a year from now. How do you feel? What is your heart telling you about a year from now? And then you imagine that you don't do it. And again, it's a year from now. What does your heart say? And all this does is it takes your strong intellect out of the picture and lets you feel what your heart is already set, telling you today. But it does work and it, it only takes two minutes. So it, it does work. And your heart will be saying which position uh, or which road is going to bring you more joy, more fun. And that's what life is about, really. It's not about the money. It's about are you enjoying life? Do you feel like you're in control um, control probably the wrong word but you know that you're living your life to the fullest uh, and getting the most out of your life oh that's so wonderful yeah that really resonates with me on uh, on every level I appreciate that so much so the throw in the rocks then is you you uh, sabotage yourself um, <laughs> yeah. that's really what this character is there but it's an intellectual sabotage so you probably are getting the sense of yeah this is something that would be really good but then you sit down and you work out all the things that could go wrong and, and you beat yourself up with those. And they may not happen. So you could, for instance, uh, you could probably think of five ways your project could fail, but it can only fail in one of those ways. But you beat yourself up with all five. Um, so w- we amplify our fears by doing something like that. So um, you need to put down the, the, the pail of rocks and, and um, realize that that doesn't help you in any way. Um, and when you do, uh, you know, you can use the strong intellect you have in very positive ways. So you decide to do something, follow your heart, and then use your strong intellect to say, how can I do it? How can, you know, what do I need to do to make that happen? Uh, and again, use your strong mind as uh, an empowering force rather than something that's going to block you. Uh, and of course, the windows then say you do have a strong intuition um, because they, they're a strong focus in the dream, uh, but you, you tend to, um, to, to not follow it. Uh, you, you look for cracks in, in your intuition. Um, yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. So, uh, but you have it there. So once you start walking the path, start, you know, do take that leap. It's going to tell you the, the rest of the things you need to do uh, because you do have that strong connection. So that's why I started to say you need to cut the ties, but you really don't. Uh, you've already got this ability. You just need to overcome the fears. And in doing that, that's going to be your therapy. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. I, you can't imagine how much um, that's a relief for me to get that focus. I knew the message was, uh, the dream was trying to tell me something, and that definitely resonates with w- what I need to do. I, I've kind of known that about myself, but not so clearly. Great. Okay. I appreciate Thank the you. call. Thanks, Okay. Allison. Thank you very much, all of you. So we have Jackie on the line as well. Jackie also has a dream. Hi, Jackie. Hi. Hi, Michael. Great. We can hear you now. So, <laughs> uh-huh, what, there we go. What is Hi. your dream? Oh, it's a strange dream. Uh, I had it the other night. My, I was talking to my son, and I noticed that when he opened his mouth, that, that little thing that came down the back of your throat was actually a bright light. And I was really concerned about it because I just had a friend who was diagnosed with cancer, and she was telling me how cancer lights up, you know, it lights up. So I was just thinking, how, what would that mean to have that thing show up as a bright light in the back of a throat? Okay, so in a dream, it's shown up as a, as a bright light. Um, first of all, when you already hear something, uh, it, you're going to project it into your dreams. What age is your son? He's 28. Okay. So, and, and has he any issues at all? Has he, like, been complaining about throat issues or anything like that? No, not at all. Okay. Not at all. Okay. So, um, you, because, you, what age was the person uh, that you mentioned who uh, was treated for it? 
I she's, was talking she's about in her fif- She's in her 50s. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I'm, was she telling you that or did she have a treatment herself? I, I well, I, I was asking because she's going in for these scans, and I said, "Well, how do they um, oh, okay. how do they they spot the cancer on the on the scans?" And she said, uh, "With the nuclear medicine, it lights up." Yeah, and I've so, I've I've been watching lots of episodes of House, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I can relate to these X rays. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it would come in handy. No, it's terrible. Research, I, I, <laughs> gotta do my research. And the worst is, it works on an iPad, so I can watch it in bed till one in the morning. Anyway. Uh, on Netflix. So, okay, when you have that fear, it's, you're just going to give it legs in a dream. That's all it is. It doesn't mean anything other than uh, you have the fear. Um, okay. So, the dream, th- there's no, we can't interpret anything from that dream because it's reality. Uh, you spoke to somebody and, and you heard me with the last caller. We extract reality from the dream. So, you talk to somebody who's gone in for um, for these tests so if anything, the dream is going to more going to be a reflection on issues with her than it is going to be anything to do with you or your son. Um, so unf- not unfortunately, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to know. Uh, we all yeah. have dreams about cancer from time to time because we all develop cancer cells uh, over the course of our lives. We will develop renegade cells, but our immune system is healthy and we'll spot them and deal with them. And uh, then you won't have those dreams anymore. So it's only if you have dreams repeatedly, night after night and several dreams per night going on for weeks and months, then you have a, an issue that you need to deal with. But an, okay. an odd dream like this is really just a reflection on what's going on in your mind and uh, the dream is trying to resolve it. And of course, this dream didn't get to the end of it, but it's OK. So what we do look at is, is she having scans in the same area? No, uh, hers is a, is a breast cancer um, and uh and I didn't when I when I saw the lightness mass, I didn't associate it with cancer. I just thought that's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. You know, to have why would you have a light in the back of your throat? But then the next day, when I was thinking about the dream, it kind of came back to me, and I thought, I wonder, you know, how you just put those two two things together. Okay, so what we do is we ignore the the cancer and we look at the light in the back of the throat and say, you have a special you are being asked to express yourself that when you express. Um, you express light. So the throat chakra is to do with expression. Um, okay. So it's saying that you've got this special communication ability. Do you, you use it? Do you know that you're able to communicate with people and uh, influence people strongly when you communicate? Do I know that I do? Yes. Sometimes, yeah. I'm in sales, so I have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, no. You're, you're, you're growing a moral compass. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, okay, so you know you have it. So um, so it's saying, okay, you can use that um, for issues that are connected with um, deeply spiritual purposes. So um, I, would, I would take your dream as a very positive. Yes, you're looking at the negatives because of what's going on in your life, but that's okay. That only seeded the dream. So it's saying, yes, uh, use your, your ability to communicate and influence people uh, and know that it's it's um, I'm going to say God given gift. I don't know why that expression is coming to me because I never say that. Um, but maybe that fits in with your philosophy. And and it's a good thing. So it's a positive thing for you. Nothing negative about that dream at all. All right. Well, thank you, guys. I love your show. All right. Thanks very much. <laughs> thanks great. for calling, Jackie. So uh, I don't even know if we have time for the, the last ad break. So um, we will just have a look at uh, was there something in the ad break you wanted to cover? No. OK. Uh, so I will just look for a really quick dream uh, if I can. And I did have one golden tree. OK, I was approached by a young man wearing small triangle shaped magnifiers on the bridge of his nose. Bridges have to do with counselling. Something like a jeweller would wear. The jeweller tells us that it is a, a, a spiritual thing uh, because it's precious. He might have been sitting in a library or something. Libraries also have to do with counselling. I told him those won't be strong enough for me. He replied, I wear a number three. And a triangle uh, is also another symbol for the number three. I put them on and everything came into clear focus. So this dreamer has been undergoing the Spanish Inquisition. Um, She's very spiritual. She has spiritual abilities um, and she has a counselling ability, as this dream says here. And she's being told, use your counselling ability, focus through the lens of your counselling ability and the inquisition you're undergoing will become a lot clearer um, because the issues that you're suffering, the, the thumb screws that are being applied to you, really reveal something about the person who's doing that rather than anything whatsoever about you. Um, so if you can, uh, well, you definitely can, focus uh, through the eyes of um, your counselling ability and look at it that way. 
So that's it for this week. I want to thank Eric Ryder, our producer and engineer. Thank you to Heidi. Thank you to Susan. And um, I can't possibly put my hands on the quote, but we will see you next week. Thank you.